How you doing there? Welcome back to Babylon Talmud. Today we're studying Daf Pe Gimel, Daf eighty three of Masechet Bav Matzia. Friends, 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 your friends. Um, however, we're starting uh, the seventh. Wow, however, oh, this makes me so happy. We're starting the seventh parak of Bav Matzia. Seven out of ten, seventy percent of the way there. Wow, however, you know how I feel about Bav Matzia. Anyways. We're starting at Sochar Zepoilim. Chavre, we've been working hard for the past almost three months. Chavre, we've been working hard for the past, like, I guess, like four and a half years. But, like, since Bava Kama, things haven't been easy, huh? Bava Metzia certainly has not been a walk in the park. We've been working hard for, like, I don't know, 83, so, like, about two and a half months. Working hard. Chavre, let me tell you. And this is also part of why I started, you know, I wanted to get a, free, a, a fresh start over here. For the next one, two, three, four, I can't, I've lost count. One, two, three, four, about like four and a half dot. That's about as far as I got also. Treat. It's going to be a treat. It's going to be a treat. It's going to be a gadata. Four days of a gadata, Heber. Let it give, give your brain a little rest. Sit back, relax. Okay. Eh. Uh, here we go. Hasurcha sepealim, somebody who hires workers, Varmer Lemon, he says to him, Lahashkin for the Hariv, you have to wake up early and you have to stay late. Mokum Shinagu, Shalola Ashkin, Vishlola Ariv, Eno Asha Lechufan. Look, if the minute where they live is that the people don't wake up early and they don't stay late, he can't force them to. Mokum Shinagu, Lazun Yazun. Now, if the minig is that the the balabayas feeds the workers, so he feeds them. Yisapik b'msika yisapik. If he gives them like uh, chumus, if he provides the chumus, provides the chumus. Hakol k'minig amadina. It's all like the minig amadina. Whatever you know, whatever the whatever the sort of custom is uh, in terms of um, uh, benefits. So that is what shall be done. Maisa b'biyechinu b'masya. We saw this about a month ago. And there was a Maisa with Rabbi Yechanan ben Masya Shomer Levno that he said to his son, go and hire for us workers. So he went and he hired workers and he says that you're gonna, that you're going to, um, you know, get food. And when, um, he came to his father, uh, Rabbi Yechanan ben Masya and he said to him, you know, I hired these, he said to his father, I hired these workers and I told him about the food. Amalo, he said to his son, Bini, my son, Afilu, even if you make them a feast, a banquet, like the banquets of King Solomon in his heyday, you still wouldn't be, you'd say, the chova of what you offered to them. Because they are the sons of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and we're going to see in the Gemara in a few days that, um, you know, interestingly, it depends how you view it. But the point is that the right that uh, that the uh, um, because the the, the Suda of Avram was even greater than the Suda of Shlomo Amalek. He says what you offered them is kind of out of our um, budget, essentially. Rather, before they start doing any work, run out quickly to Avram and say to them, "Listen up, people. We're not giving you Kisuda Shlomo Amalek b'shaito." Uh, you're going to get uh, bread and beans. That's what we're offering. That's what's on the menu. That uh, the truth is, Rabbi Yochan B'masya didn't even have to get so worked up because at the end of the day, it's Akol Kamina Gamadina. It's all, you know, if the minig is bread and beans, that's all they can really expect. Says the Gemara Pshita, it's obvious. It's obvious that if the minig is that workers don't work extra over 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 overtime, that they don't get there early and they don't stay late. So obviously you can't demand them to do so. Interesting. Well, it's talking about a scenario where he's taka paying them more than they would normally make. Hmm. So I would have thought Amalu he says I'm new. I'm paying you more. 
I'm paying you more because I figured you're going to work more hours. You're going to get there early. You're going to stay late with me. Kamash Malon, the Amule, they say to him, Haidu Tofas Lon, Adaitu Da Avdino Lach Avinta Shapirta. Yeah, I know. We know that you paid us more. Thank you very much. And we're going to do very, very beautiful work. As I said the other day, we're going to do all sorts of, throw in all sorts of extras that you don't need and don't work very well. Omer Ishlakish says, Ishlakish, Poyel, Bichnisoso, Mishelobi, Itsioso, Michel Balabais. At this point, we're starting to sort of slowly transition into Agarita. I'm telling you, Chavit, when I say Agarita, I mean Agarita. But not like, uh, no, a very, very Gishmak Agarita. A very, very, very Gishmak Agarita. Not like, uh, Different uh, remedies and and complicated things. I'm not going to be reading out of the article. Chavre. I'm going to be reading out of, out of a regular gemara. It's kishmak. So it says Rishlakish that um, speaking of Rishlakish, tomorrow is the story with Rabbi Yechiel and Rishlakish. Chavre. also Michel also when he's on his way home after work, that's on his own time. Be also when he leaves his house in the morning, Michel Balabais, that's on the Balabais's time. So meaning. The, 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 the work day is from, uh, is from daylight to nighttime. From daylight to day dark. Darkness. Night, daylight, night dark. From, from daylight to night dark. Why is there daylight and there's no night dark? Well, there is now. So, 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 so a, a worker, uh, needs to work from daylight to night dark. And then, so, so, so he works from day, from, from daylight to night dark. So now, so what does that mean? Does that mean that he has to like show up at the field, let's say, at daylight, and then he stays there until night dark? Or, so what Rishlakish is saying is that, no, he leaves his house at daylight. He doesn't have to be at the field at daylight, right? And that's what he's saying, right? Be it see also, Bishel Balabais. When he leaves his house in the morning, that, is on the Balabais' time, right? So he doesn't have to already be at the field at daylight. He, he leaves his house at daylight. But, Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm sorry. But after work, when he's coming home, when he enters his house, that's on his own time, i.e. he has to stay at the field until night dark. And only then can he leave the field. Shinemar's the says, Tizra Hashem save food. This Pasuk says in Bar Chinavshi, that when the sh- when the sun shines, yeah, safe when all the demons and things they like gather up and go home. The monosim, your boss, and they go they go to their homes. Yetsi adam fayalo, and at that point, at tizrach hashemesh, at daylight, yetsi adam fayalo, a person leaves his house to go to work. Vlavod also ade arv, and then he works. Once he gets to the field, he's then working and working and working until night dark. Once a second, but why don't we just do whatever the minog is? If the minog is that uh, you get to the field at daylight and you stay all the way until night dark, so then, so then that's what you should do. I call him minog amadino. So be'ir chadasha. Well, we're talking about in a new city where they don't yet have minogim. Minerzim echa ka'asu. Well, why don't we say, well, where did the people in the new city come from? Let's go based on the uh, custom of where they came from. Binikutai. Well, they came from all over. He by same alternatively, Darmalu Dagrisuli Kefoil Doraisa that he said to them, I'm hiring you like a de Oraisa foil, like a de Oraisa worker. And the Oraisa it is that you leave your house at daylight and then you stay at the field until night dark. Darash Ribzeri Ribzeri Darshin Va Amrila Tony Riv Yosef, some say Riv Yosef taught. My dear say, what does the Pasuk mean? Toshes Khoshek Vihilaila Bosirmos Kochai Soyar. That um, it will be dark and it will be night, and then all the uh, wild animals of the forest are out and about. That's a reference to this world that is similar to darkness. Tonight is uh, Yom Hazikaron. We're remembering a lot of darkness. But Timos Kochai, so you are Elu Shem Shebo Shedom Lechay Shebiyar. And these are the uh, evil people in this world that are similar to the beasts of the of the forest. Tizach Hashemesh Yaseifun, and then the sun shines and they and they scurry away. Vamunosin Yerbatsun, and they go to their abodes. Tizach Hashemesh Latzadikim, that the sun will shine for the righteous. Yaseifun, 
Vishoim the Gehenim, and the evil people will be gathered to hell. Vamonosum Yerbatsun. And when it says that they go to their abodes, that every single tzaddik, I think there's a reference to Olam um, Abba, that um, every tzaddik will have their own abode that is uh, befitting of his honor. And a person will go out to his work, the righteous will go out to receive their reward, and their work until the evening, Somebody who completed his avoda before the evening, i.e. somebody who, who, who put in the work while he was still alive during his lifetime. Um, okay, Heaven now. Now is when the Gareta really starts. We are going to learn a lot of stuff. We're going to learn a lot about Rabbi Lazar Rabbi Shimon. Rabbi Shimon Rabbi ben Yochai's son, Rabbi Lazar. Truth is, it's, um, what's today? Today... When I'm recording this, I think it's the 19th day of the Oymer. Which means when you're going to listen to it, it's probably going to be just about, it's going to be right around, maybe a week before Lagba Oymer. And of course, Rabbi Lazar, Reb Shimon is buried with his father, Reb Shimon, in Miron. And um, anyways, we're going to learn a lot about Rabbi Lazar, Reb Shimon now. Also some other Amaroim, Tanoim. It's going to be great. Rabbi Lazar Reb Shimon Ashkach Lau Paragavno de Kartofis Ganove. So Rabbi Lazar Reb Shimon found some uh, marshal appointed by the uh, king, and his job was to cap to catch thieves, and the punishment for the thieves that were caught, death. So Rabbi Lazar Reb Shimon says to this marshal, "I don't understand. How could you capture a thief? Are they not?" Uh, um, uh, um, uh, uh, what's the word? Not like compared, not like metaphored. Are they not? I don't know. Re- refer uh, referred to like um, wild beasts. How can how can you how can you arrest a wild beast? They said botir that all the beasts of the forest, you know, wander around. Some say he said from the following verse, Yeru Bamistar Kaari Bisuko that he that he waits in a in a uh, in a uh, ambush like a lion. Maybe you know who you're managing to arrest? Maybe you're managing to arrest the righteous people and you're actually leaving the evildoers. So the marshal says, okay, but what the marshal says, so what should I do? I mean, the king needs me to be arresting people. You're saying I, I'm, I'm re- arresting righteous people and it's impossible to arrest the wicked people. What do I do? So Omar, so Rabbi Lozab Rabbi Shimon says, this is what you do. Come, I'll teach you what to do. Ul shoi lichanusa. Go at the fourth hour of the day, breakfast time, go to the diner. If you see anybody there who is drinking wine and is holding a cup in his hand and he's dozing off, inquire about this fellow. Who is this guy? Now if he's a Tamil Chacham and he's dozing off, well, well, surely it's because he's been up for a long time, he woke up early to learn and now he's tired. If he's a worker, he woke up early to do his work and now he's tired. And if his work is at night and you know you go by his house and it's quiet, so so what's, what's he up to? You can assume that he's got a quiet job like you know uh, making wires and stuff that doesn't make much noise and they would do it at night, I guess. I don't know, at least this guy's employed at night. So basically, you know, you see somebody dozing off in the diner at breakfast time. So inquire about him. You know, if 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 if, if there's nothing to be s- suspicious about, so all good. But ve'ilo. But if he's not a tamil chacham and he's not, you know, he's not a worker, and nobody knows what his deal is, ganovahu, you can as- assume that he's a thief and he's up all night, you know, uh, sneaking up on people and robbing them. 
So, and then, Mr. Marshall, you go and you arrest them because you can assume, you could rest assured that they are a thief. Why not? Ishtamea milsa, ishtama milsa, maybe ishtama. Ishtima. How about that? Ishtima. Ishtima milsa be malka. By the king, they heard about Rabalazar, Reb Shimon's advice. Um, they said, Love it. They said, the reader of the, of the, of the, of the, of the, um, um, scroll of the, of the, of the letter, he should be the one to carry it out. I love it. That's great. Because it, it felt like, uh, Reb Lazar Reb Shiva was like, you know, here he is, you have a marshal who is out doing the work, trying to find the thieves. And here you have a Tamar Chacham who lives in the Beis HaMedrash who's saying, ah, you really think you're finding thieves? What in the Pasuk says? You can't possibly catch a thief. It must be you're catching Mishra. But you know what to do. You go to the diner and that's where you find the thieves when they're sleeping in the diner. And um, and the king's like, you know what? If a blessed of Shimon says, let, let, let him go and do it. I just kind of feel, <laughs> I don't know. Feels to me like we're like Rebbe Lazar is like one of these like academics who likes like write books about how to do stuff but doesn't actually do it. So it's like, well, why don't you do it if you're so smart? And it's like, uh, I don't know, I'm busy writing. <laughs> Anyways, I saw the Rebbe Lazar, Reb Shimon. So okay, they took Rebbe Lazar, Reb Shimon, and he was going to um, he was going to uh, he was going to catch the thieves. Because Tov is Ganove, and now he's the, he's the chief uh, thief catcher. He would go to the diners and uh, catch the thieves. Va'azil, okay, he was catching the thieves. Shalach le Rabbi Yeshua ben Karcha, so Rabbi Yeshua ben Karcha sends to Rabbi Lazar Rabbi Shimon, Chometz ben Yayin, vinegar, the son of wine. Obviously his father was Rabbi Shimon ben Yechai. Obviously his father was, was wine, was, was great. Yeah, but he is vinegar. He's, he's going, he's ratting on Yidin. He's ratting on Yidin. They're gonna, and then, and then they're gonna get killed by the king. An Mose at Mose Amushel, Eli, Shalukenu la Riga. So Rabbi Shimon ben Karcha, Rabbi Lazar ben Shimon, what, what, what are you doing? You're, you're sending in to their deaths by the king. Shalach lei kotzim ani mechalim in akerim. Rabbi Lazar ben Shimon said, "Mapitom, I'm pruning the thorns from the vineyard. I'm getting rid of the bad people." Shalach lei yovu ba lekerim bichalas kotzim. The Eibushter can take care of getting rid of the bad people. You, you know, you can take care of learning. One day a certain launderer bumped into Rabbi Lazar Bib Shimon. And he called Rabbi Lazar Bib Shimon Chometz Ben Yayin. Vinegar, the son of wine. Omar. Rabbi Lazar Bib Shimon says, This person is a basket case. He's a piece of work. He's so chutzpedik. Well, clearly, he's a Russia. Omelu. Tafsu, Tfasu. So he said to the king's people, take him away. Tfasu, they took him away. The Vasu de Nochna Daite. But then after Belazab Shimon kind of calmed down a little bit after the insult, he said, Oh wait, that wasn't very nice, they're gonna kill him. Oh sorry, Mom. That's not very nice, they're gonna kill him. So as a Basu the Froke, so he went to try to get him back. You know, he figured he felt bad, it was a little bit heavy handed. Um, so he went to get him back, Velomatsi. And they didn't let they no they wouldn't they wouldn't they wouldn't let him out. Kariyali so Blessed Rabbi Shimon says all right well sorry. Show me pivul shono show me mitzaras nafsho look a person who guards his mouth and his tongue saves himself uh, from from tribulations. Uh, Mister Launder, I'm I'm sorry I feel for you but you did not guard your mouth and your tongue and you brought it upon yourself. Skafu and they hanged him. Come to says kifo v'kabachi. Now, under the gallows, uh, Rabbi Lozab Rabbi Shimon was crying under the, under the gallows because uh, he felt bad. He felt bad that this person was dying on his account. Amrule, Rebbe, they said to him, Al yera no, 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 you did the right thing. Shehu no balu nairim arasa b'yom kippurim. He and his son uh, cohabited with a nairim arasa on Yom Kippur. You know, this is not a good guy. So Rabbi Lozab Rabbi Shimon then put his hand on his stomach and we're going to see shortly that he had quite the stomach. Omar, he said, Sisu b'nei mei, Sisu, rejoice, my intestines rejoice. Umasveikish shalochim kach, look, if when you're uncertain about something, I didn't I didn't know that he was boil a Nair Maras and Yom Kippur with his son. 
But, uh, you know, my, my gut said so. And you were right. Well, then certainly when you know something for sure, then certainly you're right about that. I'm confident that worms and maggots and stuff won't um, worm and maggot you. My stomach. But still, he did not feel good. He, he, he still felt guilty that he caused this person to be hanged. So they did a, st- a shtickle surgery. They gave him a, um, a, uh, an anesthetic. And they brought him to a marble house, room. They tore open his, his, his girth, his stomach. And they just removed from him baskets and baskets of fat. And they put the fat out in the sun. In, in the middle of the summer. And they did not get all wormy. But but all fat in general doesn't get all wormy. Yeah, the fat itself might not become all wormy and rotten, but uh, if there's like pieces of flesh in there, that can get all wormy and rotten. But here, even though there was like pieces of flesh in there, it did not get all wormy and maggoty. So, Allah Zubab Shimon said about himself, also my flesh will rest forever and will not be eaten by like maggots and things. Okay. And the same predicament happened with Rab Yishma Rab Yose that they asked him to be the robber catcher. Pogabe Eliyahu and Eliyahu Anovi found Rab Yishma Rab Yose. Armelein, he said to him, Admosi atemosi amo shalalukino lariga. Why are you sending the Yidden to their deaths? Armelein, he says to Eliyahu, Ma'avid, Hamona de Malkahu. What should I do? The, 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 the king, the king told me this is what I need to do. What should I do? Omar Leiso, Liyahu Novi says to Rabbi Shema Rabbi Yossi, Ovuch Arak Asyo at Arak Liludkaya. Look, your father fled to Asya. You shall flee, you should flee to Ludkaya. Interesting. Okay, uh, I'm just gonna, yeah. Question is, do I have time to finish the daf with, before I hit the half an hour mark? Cause that's when I have to switch the video. Let's, let's go for it. We could do it. Yeah, we could do it. Now, the Gemara talks about just how fat Rabbi Lazar, Rabbi Shimon, and Rabbi Shmo, Rabbi Yossi were. Kav Mikloi, Rabbi Shmo, Rabbi Yossi, Rabbi Lazar, Rabbi Shimon, Badi Adadi. When Rabbi Lazar, Rabbi Shimon, and, and Rabbi Shmuel, Rabbi Yossi would stand next to each other, have a ayel bakr de tori benayu, a pair of, 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 of oxen would be able to walk beneath their stomachs. Like, their stomachs, I, I'm imagining like their stomachs were like so big that they would, it would create like a, a space underneath it that like cows could walk through or something like that. But basically, they couldn't really get too close to each other because they're, their bellies would like bump into each other. Vilava noga behu, and he's like, I think we're saying that the, the and the and the and the um and like they wouldn't, I don't know, touch. Uh, okay, like the cows wouldn't touch their stomach. It was like, I don't know, a whole big space would be created just under their stomachs. Amra lehu aimatronisa. A certain matron said to them, Benechem enim shalochem. Well, clearly your children are not your children because. You're so fat that you can't have beer. There's too much stomach. So Amar Amru La, so they said to her, Shelo and Godom So there's two ways to understand this. One way is that actually our wives' stomachs are even bigger than ours. The other way to understand it is that, well, their, their desire for beer is greater than ours. So, Kol Shekens, and she says, well, then all the more so. If they have such a great desire for Bia, well, then they're probably getting it from some other place. 
So, Ikadamu, those who say, Achi Amrula, that this is what they said to her, Kikiish Gvur also, oh, that well, so is a fellow, so is his strength, i.e., um, well, just like our stomachs are very big, so are our penises. Ikadamu, to those who say, Achi Amrula, this is what they said to her, Ahava Dochekes is a bosser, that when there's a lot of love, it finds its way past all the fat. Why did they even have to respond to her at all? The puzzle says, Don't answer a foolish person in his foolishness. Well, because she was, she was, she was bringing up quite the uh, claim. I mean, she was saying that their children aren't theirs. They had to respond. She could, they, they couldn't allow that, that kind of a rumor to spread. They had to stop it right then and there. Omri B'yeichanon says Rabbi Yechon, Ivrei de Rabbi Shmob Rabbi Yossi, Kechemes bas Teisha Kabin. Very nice. Says Rabbi Yechon, that Rabbi Shmob Rabbi Yossi's penis was like a, 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 um, canteen that could hold nine calves. I think that's a lot. Because, I th- Tisha Kabin is like, you can like, right, you can like go to a mikvah, but, or like an alternative is like, for certain things, you can like just like shower in like nine calves. There must not be a little. On my papa says, her papa, Avery de Rabyechnon Kichemas Bas Chameshes Kavin. Wow. Says her papa that Rabyechnon's penis was a, um, a, um, canteen that could hold five calves. All right, we're going to learn about the Rabyechnon right after this, but not today, tomorrow. Rabyechnon was also very, very fat, as we know from the end of, uh, Bavakama, that they had to like keep his eyes open with uh, like tweezers or whatever. But Amrila, and they say, Some say that it was like a uh, canteen that could hold uh, three cups. And what about Rapope? His penis was like a Harpenein basket. With that, I, I will leave you on that note and I will catch you tomorrow um, for some awesome Agadita. Um, tomorrow is the story with Rabbi Yechonon and Rish Lakish um, when they met and we're going to talk more about Rabbi Loza Rabbi Shimon and all sorts of great stuff we have in a few days of Agadita front, uh, ahead of us it's going to be really awesome hope you enjoy Peace out